The fact of the matter is, almost everything we see on a daily basis can be judged by its cover. That doesn't mean it's right. Model UN on its cover, too many people appear to be some kind of nerdy club. But in fact, when you join this club and you start to experience it, in truth, I realize that the most mature and socially responsible people I know have come from this club. By far, no one in this club can be considered a nerd. And in fact, some of the worst performers in Model UN competitions are the nerds. So in conclusion, I find that judging a book by its cover is the worst thing you can do and by far the best lesson I've learned. Thank you. What you're going to have to do to keep you from going off track, you're going to have to bullet your points. I never saw you look at your legal pad once. Because I didn't have enough time to write it. Okay, well you should. <laughs> I was like, it was just there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to do that, but the thing, but the thing really is, oh Lord, we, you need to, you need to do that so that you will know to use the transitions when they're bulleted, and you will not stray from that. Yeah. But you also need to keep that, get that pattern going in your head where you know you've got to move from this point, you've got to move to the next point, you've got to move to the next point. Yeah. So that. I'm here with you today to discuss the topic that real love is not the subject or, or the stuff of pop songs of modern uh, contemporary culture. Now, uh, as you'll find with many pop songs that you'll see uh, throughout the days, uh, <laughs> most of it's quite facetious and it represents a superfluous idea that relationships are ideal situations to find yourselves in, whereas they're really not. Uh, as an example, I would not catch a grenade for pretty much anyone. I don't, no, I would not do that. Nor do I believe that pop icons represent the perfect uh, relationship partner. Chris Brown, his wife, or his girlfriend, rather. And that obviously isn't a representation of what true love should be. So while I do believe that love is possible, I do not believe that it can be represented in pop culture because most of the time it's going to end up placing you on your couch with a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, watching reruns of Friends, and crying to yourself, wondering why you're actually in that situation. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, real life experience. <laughs> <laughs> you went one of four. Exactly. Exactly. You went one of four. And did you feel, did you feel like whenever you saw the hands, it makes you, it yeah. makes you rethink about the next time you want to say it? Yeah. It's hard to think about all of these different things that you guys have to every single time. So, so we want to make sure that we don't forget about transitions, and also remember the remember the usefulness of what you're saying. Everything you do in Model UN is going to be based on everything you say is going to be to tr to, in an effort to get somebody to do something. So, whenever you're taking a position on these silly topics, you have to you have to pick something that you're trying to say. And you had a really good opening, you had a really good position that you were at the point that you were trying to make, uh, why why you should do those things and what you should try to do. Whenever you end, you want to end with what you you want to you're telling the audience basically what I want you to do is, and without saying that. So, whenever when you're finished, the audience should be thinking that she's right. That's what I should do. And so that so every time you finish talking, the <laughs> that's what he has on the inside. It's not how he dresses or his facial structure <laughs> and his knowledge that truly impress people. Good looks don't get you far in life, but intelligence and character do, and that's what matters. You uh, you at least used for example a number of times you went uh, you went over a minute twelve even though you were standing in the cheater spot where you totally could have seen so I'm just saying. <laughs> um, okay, but did we hear any ums or uhs out of Nathan? No. no. Well, that was good. No. Would you rather be caught picking your nose on the huge screen in a big stadium or on a first date with someone special? Ladies and gentlemen. If you're at a stadium, regardless of what sporting event it is or how many people are present, chances are you will not know at least 99% of them. Let's avoid the mystery. We all pick our noses. We all have situations in which we need to relieve our nasal cavities of any congestion that it may possess. However, if you're on a first date with someone special, it's much harder to hide that and make it covert. However, even if it is on the big screen at the stadium, you're never going to see those people again in your life. 
But if you ruin a first date with someone special, you ruin the potential to have anything that could have blossomed from that relationship. Whether it's a friendship or even marriage, you could have potentially ruined it. Therefore, I would conclude that it's extremely more beneficial, not only to yourself and your own embarrassment, but to virtually the rest of your life, to pick your nose in front of an entire stadium full of people that you don't know, rather than someone who you could potentially share the rest of your life with. Thank you. I don't know what Charles did in meeting this lane can clarify this, but as he was speaking, I found myself like agreeing with him. Like I, I was yeah. nodding. Yeah. You yeah. I know why. Yeah. why? It's because when he talks, he when he talks, he was looking. He, he he gives eye contact and he gives he gives the positive nod. Anybody anybody who's taken my class, we've talked about this in class mm -hmm. about how if you look at someone long enough, whenever you're talking to them, and if you just give a very slight nod while you're talking to them. People will start nodding their heads, and I see some of you already doing it while I'm doing this. <laughs> it is a net, and, and so he, if you can, there are things that you can make yourself do that no one realizes you're making, because you don't have to be like this while you're talking. You can, it, it's just a slight, it's just a slight something, something positive. You make that eye contact with a, directly with a person, and you, there are things you can do that are going to make them feel like whatever you're saying is positive. And it's just, it, it's a human nature thing. We just yeah. don't. Is you need to take advantage of a pause. A silent pause is fine. Okay. Just remember that. A silent pause is okay. And it helps you, it helps those thoughts gather up in your head a lot faster. And we'll meet before, before we go. But, the, but it, it really helps those thoughts gather up and it gives your, it gives your, your mouth a second to take on what your brain has going on up there. So yeah, and it's okay. It may feel weird to you. I've told everybody this. It may feel weird to you to give a, a two-second pause. It may seem like a really long time, but to the audience, it's not really that noticeable. So, okay. and, and sometimes a good pause can get everybody it's going. It's just a habit for me to just right. say, uh,